Okay, what we're going to do today is look at taking data that we've collected out in the field. All right, so we've gone and got our data out in the Kalang River, for example. Some of you might have a hypothesis related to width, depth, or cross section, or discharge. So you would need to explain your discharge by looking at the shape, perhaps, of your cross sectional area. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the data that we collected hypothetically for one of the sites. And we're going to put it into our Excel spreadsheet and then we're going to turn it into a cross section so we can show it visually and this will help us explain our findings all right so first and foremost what we need to do is we need to highlight the area that we are looking at turning into a cross section so what you can see here is up the top here this shows where I measured the depth across the river channel so for example my river was 5.5 meters wide you can see that here what I did is I went across the river 50 centimeters I put the metering or measuring stick down and it was 15 centimeters deep All right then I went another 50 centimeters across so that would be one meter across the, the channel and it's 19 centimeters deep another 50 centimeters so 1.5 meters across, it's 45 centimeters deep, and so forth. So this is what I'm using here. Okay, so I've selected the data that I want to turn into a cross section. So we're doing site one hypothetically, right? So now what I need to do is I need to choose the type of chart that I want. So insert here, chart, we're going to choose an area chart, okay? Right, so this is an upside down cross section. So what we need to do is we need to, or we need to label it, we need to put it into the appropriate color, because we're not gonna have an orange river, and we need to make sure, if I look here, that this actually is representing the width of the river channel. So there are quite a few things that we just need to do, but first thing we're gonna do is get rid of these lines here. So if I just double click on these lines, and then go delete, they've gone, all right? So we wanna get rid of those. Okay, the next thing that we wanna do is basically flip, this because this is like I'm walking up a hill so this would be okay if I was drawing a cross section of the land but we're going down into the river so what I want to do here is I want to highlight that there and then just want to right click here I want to format this axis here and then over here what I want to do is click on values in reverse order and what you can see is that has flipped into what now looks a lot more like a cross section for a river. All right, so we've done that there for that axis. Now what I want to do here, so we just need to highlight, get it in the right position here. All right, so we want to highlight this one here. So same thing, we'll right click and adjust that there. We'll just right click that and we'll format the axis there. In case there's a few things that we need to do. So once we've done that, what we need to do down here on the right hand side is we need to go down to this one here and we need to make this none, right? And then we need to go down to labels and what we wanna do is label position, high, right? So what I've done here is I've taken the width numbers and I've moved them down here okay so what I need to do now is I actually need to replace these numbers all right so what we'll do here again we'll just click inside here we'll right click and what we're going to do is click on select data okay so that will take us to a different screen like this one here all right now we're going to select data here so just move that aside what you need to do is you need to put the cursor there in the horizontal axis label. The data that we want to select, this is showing us the width, all right? So we want to select the width data here. So what we're going to do is start here. Actually, I'll just remove that from here. We're just going to select this data here and go across to zero. Actually, sorry, we will just go, start again. We'll just go across to 5.5, and then we'll just go, okay. Now what you can see here is the width of the river there, all right? So that's looking pretty good so far. We don't need these here. 
all we really need to do is label our axes. So what we'll do is we'll move this into a better position. I can still see the shape. I don't want to distort it too much. If I click on here, what I can start doing is I can move the chart area in. You want to put some labels on it. All right, so you can play around with that there in the position. You can put a title on it, so we'll call it cross section of site one along the Klang River. Right. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Still a couple of things that we need to do here. All right, we need to put some axes labels on. There's no point in doing all this hard work and losing marks for that. So what we want to do is we want to put some titles on. We'll start with our horizontal. That's pretty simple. We'll call that width in meters. Right. Put that there. And we can reposition that wherever we want it. So we'll just put it below. We'll just move back to the same spot here. And we need to put a title on here. This is my depth. This is in centimeters, right? So we can't get this one here. So that's depth in centimeters there, right? So it's looking pretty good. A couple more things that we want to do here is we probably want to change the color of the river, all right? So you can just take a look at that there, and I want to change that to blue, all right? So you can play around with the type of blue that you want. Okay, so I can just click on here, the rest of it. Some people like to fill the rest of it in. I want to do that gradient fill. I might have something like that there, but if I do this, I can have a pattern and it's in, in brown, for example. All right, so I could choose that to be a brown color or brownish color. And that's a bit more reflective of a river channel. All right, so you can play around with some of the colors that you would want there. Okay, so what I've done is create a perfect, what looks like a meandering river cross section. So what you could do is you could copy and paste these and put these on your maps. The Kalang River is not spelled correct there, so we could change that. But you could copy and paste these onto your maps, or you could use one or two of these to help explain either anomalies or findings when talking about width, depth, cross sectional area, or explaining your findings. All right, so hopefully that was useful. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.